get a number in front of them, there might be a type of DES uh, obfuscation that's used. All right, let me see. Where's my Unix? Linux, uh, sorry, Linux box. I went too far. There we go. I'm going to. Uh, I start up my uh, backtrack box. And let's actually show the password there. Let's see. I think it's. Um, let's cat out Etsy password. Now, as I say, in old style uh, Unix systems, this would actually have the password hash right there where you'd see it. Here, you don't actually have it. I believe that's the X here. That's because they don't want that world readable. They want that to where only like admins or sorry root can see it. So um, they move into something called shadow, which since I am root, I can see that. So let me cat out shadow. And most of these accounts don't actually have a password, but if I move on up to root, you see it does have a password. And this particular one uh, corresponds to the password Tor, T-O-O-R, but that's where the hash actually is. And I could copy that out if I wanted to and do a crack on it with a hash cat. But that's where you would find them on a Linux box. Um, another type of hash I'd like to talk about is, and I find these really interesting, Windows cache credentials. By default, on a, uh, most Windows systems, the last 10 users, they get the credentials cached in the local machine. That way, if someone logs in, tries to log in, and there's network problems where they can't contact the domain controller, they can still get access to the box. Now, I think there's some version of Windows, I'm trying to think, is it Windows uh, 2008 on Civit that's cached to like 25 different ones? But uh, to my knowledge, on even up to Windows 7, it's 10. Though Windows 7 does something a little different, which I'll cover here shortly. Basically, the way these whole stored uh, credentials work, they're there so that um, if the domain goes down or network communications to the domain controls go down, people can still log in. And what they do is they use this special secret stored here in what's known as the, uh, the, the NLK M key uh, inside local share, sorry, local, I'm trying to what LSA stands for. Failure on that. Anyway, there's a key there, and that. Local Security Authority? Yeah, Local Security Authority? Uh, and the key is stored there, and that key is used for unencrypting values that are in the registry at these locations. NL dollar sign 1 through NL dollar sign 10. And I think that these particular uh, keys you can't actually get to via administrative privileges. You have to be system, unless you go in as system and then go into the registry and assign anybody to have rights to them. Or you can do some kind of, you know, hack to become system or get system level privileges and grab them anyway. Now the basic algorithm these, these are more secure than NTLM hashes or LM hashes because they all salted, sort of, the salt with the username. Basically, and this is the algorithm I looked up online via Insider Pro, the username is turned to all lowercase, the Unicode version of it. It's added on with the person's password, also Unicode. All that is MD4 together, and then it's MD4 again. And so essentially, this username acts as salt. So let's say two people have the password monkey. Well, it's going to be a different hash resulting because they have different usernames. Does that kind of explain the whole idea of hashing better? And salt. And so, uh, sorry, and, and salting. Sorry. <laughs> yes. So is it per Windows box or the domain here? What if you're connected to a solid domain? Can it store more than 10 caches? Well, it's, well it, it depends what the client is. This is on the client. Okay. These passwords, these stored credentials are on the client. Yeah, but you're saying that's if it's Windows XP, it can hold 10. If it's Windows 7, it might hold more than 10. Well, if Windows 7, I think, also holds 10. Okay. But I'm not sure. So they can hold more. They can all hold more, but that's the default oh. in the registry. If you go to uh, secfold.msc, you can set the value. You can set it to be nothing if you yeah. want to. That's what uh, most of the hardened servers will have. Is it's yeah, stable. but my understanding is also if you have a Windows 2000, I think it's Windows 2008 box, and let's say it's not a domain controller in and of itself, my understanding is I believe they store 25 by default. 
I was reading something along this, and I may be completely off base. Um, I was it happens. Was ten, but you know, who knows? Could be. Workstations are definitely 10. Yeah, most workstations that seem to all 10. I, there was a certain version of uh, Windows that was more than 10 by default. Probably but would be like a, could it be like a domain? Well, no. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a domain controller because what's the point of caching them on a domain controller? Yeah. You can talk to yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. All right. I was going to show this off in Windows 7. Unfortunately, all the tools I know of for doing this don't seem to actually work in Windows 7. Uh, there's actually a Python script out there for uh, dumping them, but I haven't got a chance to really play with that enough to, to test it. Usually I use Windows, uh, sorry, I, I use, I use uh, Kane for dumping stored credentials, but as you can see, it didn't do a very good job of it. It knows the number of characters in my domain, and it even got the right number of characters in the username I was using. This is that some user, or actually some domain user, I believe, that I mentioned before. But it didn't actually pull out the right characters. So currently, Kane cannot dump Windows 7 uh, hashes properly. And I even used this hash, and I used the, uh, the username, which I already knew. Still, no joy. It didn't actually work. By the way, this right here, that's the format you would use if you were to load up uh, cached credentials inside of Kane. I'm not sorry, inside of Hashcat. I'm going to show that here in a second. Uh, let me go ahead and, before I go into how to stop this from happening, let's go ahead and uh, go back to our system and uh, show doing this in Kane. Um, actually, I'm going to use my local box just because VMware has been giving us some fits here recently. Let's uh, show the desktop. And here I have Kane. I don't care that the firewall is enabled since I'm not going to do anything on the network. If we do a sniffers class later on, we have a lot of nifty uh, network stuff we can do with Kane. All right, I'm going to go into cache credentials. I can try dumping my local Windows 7 cache credentials, say, from the local system. But this one's never been attached to a domain, so I get nothing anyway. But that's what those all question mark screenshot I showed you. Try it on your Windows 7 box. If you can figure a way to make it actually work, please let me know. Instead, I... Yes? When I was trying to it, it was saying that the file was... Wait, what were you trying to do? I was actually trying to dump the same. Okay, were you doing it off of a live system? Yes. Here's the deal with that. If you're up in Windows, you can't load the SAM or the, sorry, the system SAM or the security file of the Windows that's currently running. So you have to use a boot CD, copy them off, and use an offline version of them. Now, there's one weird exception to that. There's a tool called, uh, I think it's called iSword. It's meant for like uh, debugging problems with like spyware. But you can actually point it at a file that's locked and say, copy the for this for me anyway. And you can then take that copy. But yeah, if it's a live system, that's why we have to boot from a boot CD to grab that SAM and system and uh, security file. Because it's going to be locked by default if you try to do it from the, from the install that it's currently running from. I remember using this program Sam's side and we'd be able to point it at uh, not using Windows 7 but more of XP and still be able to go to Even if it was open up. And, and, it it and it wasn't do, do it wasn't using DLL insertion for it? No, I mean it was it was it wasn't even done. It was just huh. you know, it doesn't work on Windows 7 but on, uh, on XP just say import uh, Well uh, Well at least in Kane, yeah, in Kane and also Stand Up 2, they're going to have to be offline. You just basically make a copy of them. Or in Stand Up 2, you're actually booted up in a Linux environment, so they're not they're not locked anyway. So I'm going to go into uh, MS Cache Credentials. Actually, Stand Up 2 does not dump MS Cache Credentials. That's a different thing. Remember how in, uh, when we dumped in LM and NTLM hashes, we pointed it at SAM and system? It's something similar with MS Cache, MS cache hashes. But we point it at something a little different. We're going to point it at the system hive. And I already told you, it doesn't seem to work with Windows 7. Uh, if you want to play around, if it actually included um, those hives in that download I gave everybody. Um, I'm going to point it towards the, uh, conf the files I have. XP config folder. And... Uh, Wait, which one was I had to get first? I'm trying to, oh, system. And I'm going to point towards security. 
say next. Can Nessus come here, Sandbot, while I'm using her? I think Nessus can. Nessus can? Actually, I honestly don't know. If you don't know other tools that can do it, let me know. Now, the ones I've seen that, that do do it, you don't point them directly at the file. It basically, uh, it does it like a DLL insertion into, um, well, Kane's a little different also. Not Kane, uh, Mesclerc's a little different also. But it basically does some other than reading directly from the file. It uses stuff that's up uh, running processes and injects something into them to actually be able to extract the hashes as opposed to putting it through the SAM system. But here I have the hash, and if I wanted to, I could start cracking it. Um, I will do that here shortly. I actually won't do it now. You, uh, just, you imported the XP ones that you did? Yes, I used the XP one. Oh, I'm getting the okay. What L are you getting? Uh, let me try again. Let me, let me do that one more time. Uh, I'm going to remove this from the list. I'm going to hit plus. And essentially what I do is I point the system to the system uh -huh. and security to security. Say next. And there's my hash. And if I wanted to, I could then go ahead and do an attack. And much like LM and NTLM hashes, I have several different options. I'm just going to do a dictionary attack and start that bad boy up. And it should run through and... Oh, I don't, actually don't have a dictionary loaded. In Kane, you may have to go add to list and choose a password list to use. So in this case, I would point it towards C... Actually, you know what? I don't think I actually ever actually uh, set that up. So program files, x86 in this case, because I'm running on 64-bit windows. Um, Word lists, word list. And I just recalled that I don't think I ever actually added that password in there. Bad yeah, it's, it's bad pass. Well, I wanted to keep it simple, because it's a shame that, you know, if I actually forgot my own uh, bad password while I was doing a class on bad passwords, so go figure. All right, let's bring up word lists. And for giggles, for giggles, let's go ahead and add that to the uh, end. All right. And I'm going ahead and uh, tell it not to do any kind of mangling of it. Just password as is and have it start up. But you, I used Kane there to dump it, and you see it cracked it. It took it a couple seconds, but not too awful long. If the people choose a good password, cracking this, the, the, the cache tash for the uh, domain credentials is pretty difficult if they got like a passphrase or something. Uh, and as I was showing you before, Windows 7 currently, I'm not sure what tools can actually dump that. There might be one. If anybody knows of one or finds one, please let me know. Let's say I want to do the exact same thing with Hashcat instead. Uh, I can do that. I just have to... Um, let me find this. When I did my dump, it actually put things in a file for me. So I can do that by uh, finding... Ah, uh, yes. Cache.lst. That's a little text file that contains those hashes. But you see, since I actually successfully cracked it, it uh, seems to have removed it. So let, let me go ahead and clear this again and get that hash back and make it think that we never actually cracked it. If nothing else, you should get a lot more familiar with um, Kane by the end of this. All right, there we go. Actually, you could. Kane has a, so many different features on it. Huh. Well, let me close out of this because for some reason, should you want to? Yes, I do. All right, now it's actually put it in there. Now you see, the format's a little different. The way the format is going to work for Hashcat is we 